Hey everyone, this is Gary Kay, and this is a special edition of my Rants and Raves. Um, we're not promoting any particular product. We're here to just talk about sort of an emerging application. And I asked Remy Del Mar from Epson, Senior Manager of Commercial Projectors and Augmented Reality, to join me for this discussion because of a discussion, Remy, you and I had on LinkedIn, your response to something I posted on LinkedIn. Uh, first off, how are you doing? Good, Gary, and, and thanks for the opportunity to see you and have this conversation with you. You're doing great. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. I, you know, you already know that I'm a big fan of projectors. I remember 10, 12 years ago, all the industry pundits writing the projectors dying a rapid death <coughs> in different articles in different places. And I said, actually, I think that's not happening. I think that what we're going to see is a, an emergence of displays everywhere or video everywhere. And that the best technology to do that is going to be projector because the cost per square inch of a projection technology is significantly lower than all the other display technologies. And ironically, if you look at like the emerging flat panel display technologies like LED, they're like 20 times the cost of projector uh, projection technology. So the, the path is clear. We're going to stay with projection. What's emerging recently that we got into a discussion about online is you know, with Microsoft Front Row's introduction of the, or Microsoft Teams introduction of Front Row, they're promoting an aspect ratio that is wider than 16 by nine. They're promoting a, what they're calling a 21 by nine aspect ratio, which you're seeing here on the screen. Um, and, uh, you know, you can do this with uh, flat panel display technology. You can do it with LED very expensively, but with projection, you can do it with existing products that you potentially have, and you have an entire line of products that are uh, that have already been adapted to this. Talk about that for a second, because you know obviously Epson's not the only projector company out there, so we could kind of bundle this with, with all of them. But but you've obviously focused on this. Absolutely, no, thanks, Gary. Uh, yeah, actually, my experience in sort of meeting room experiences goes back to my days at Logitech. I was a manager at uh, Logitech for video uh, webcams and um, some of them are still around. And of course they went through a boom during the pandemic with and all the um, employees having to participate in a virtual experience. Now, something that I think helped uh, create sort of a renaissance for us in how do we perceive our placement in meeting rooms is that um, in many, many surveys, both internally at Epson and externally by other companies, uh, over 60% of executives and in employees said that they are going to go to a hybrid mode and they're going to redesign their office spaces. Let's talk about the why and, and you know, with the role of Microsoft. Um, you know, in the past, if we congregated into a physical meeting room, um, we had a panel where we could share a 69 PowerPoint presentation or Excel spreadsheet and talk about it. But now you have virtual attendees. You have other conversations that are happening on the side, like chats or tasks and whatnot. So you have people, content, and collaboration. So in that essence, you need a larger canvas. And to your point, that canvas today by Microsoft Front Row is 21.9. However, preceding, before, beforehand, even we were thinking about how do you create a wall size canvas where you can have all your applications and tools at your fingertip without feeling like you're not, um, you're not replicating a physical experience when you are meeting with virtual attendees. And so with that, we basically uh, sort of worked uh, closely with Microsoft and I know they're working with other partners to see how they're envisioning their future for Teams and Teams Front Row. How can we participate and make that easier for our channel partners to do it at a lower cost? And with that, we updated the firmware on many of our platforms, including the ones that we're showcasing at Infocom to have the 21.9 in the operating system uh, menu. So if someone wants to use Front Row, in a team certified room, they can just go to that setting and get into the 21.9 easily and have that um, larger canvas desired and asked for by MTR devices. So you've in integrated this into a couple of different product lines. Um, you talk about firmware update, the EB-1 series, which is at all a bunch of projectors and the two series, which allows you to, it's interesting what you're doing. You're basically, for those people who are like into the tech side of this, blanking the image, 
but then also allowing you to use the entire imager and you're a three LCD company, which allows you to shift the image higher or lower, wherever you want to put it based on camera placement. This is interesting because your, your expertise is probably highly valued in Epson because of your experience with Logitech and the webcams, Brio. We, we are, in fact, my whole entire company has, everyone in the company has Brios. Um, and uh, I'm sure you're happy with that because, and, and you know, talk about Logitech for a second. I mean, what a, what a couple of years they've had, doubled the size of the company in two years. That doesn't happen too often. Um, you know, I, I would venture to say Epson's gonna have some great years coming up here because projection's gonna be pervasive everywhere. But, you know, this goes beyond front row. So we have front row with this 21 by nine concept. But, you know, I've been talking about, I know you've heard me talk about this idea of a digital canvas, right? Is that you just project or, or image up a big canvas and put content wherever you want to put it. And, and what you're talking about and what you're alluding to, because you have chat and you have your PowerPoint or whatever presentation you use and your video because you have remote participants. What you're talking about is nonlinear presentations or nonlinear meetings, meaning we're not going from slide one to slide two to slide three in an order. We are collaborating, which is by definition nonlinear, which means that the content has to be nonlinear too. Microsoft has jumped on this inside of Teams. So if you're a Teams company, okay, you have a drop in opportunity here, but really it's got to go beyond that because you also have to be able to accommodate websites. You have to be able to accommodate YouTube videos. You have to be able to accommodate social media feeds and things like that. So what you're talking about doing here inside the projector isn't exclusively for front row, but does give you the ability. And for that matter, you could blanket any aspect ratio, right? I mean, you could build a wall and, and project the entire wall uh, as long as you had a high resolution enough image imager or high enough resolution enough projector. And you've got projectors that do up to 4K. So you have the ability to put whatever content you want. So we're really, aren't we moving closer to sort of this uh, um, uh, omnipresent digital canvas concept that I've been talking about for 10 years? Yes, so if you think about, the, for us, the approach is short-term, long-term. Short-term, how do we enable our constituents to uh, convert and retrofit their existing meeting rooms to create uh, a culture of collaboration needed uh, globally, you know, bridging the distance between virtual attendees and physical attendees while being able to work on documents and have uh, things at their disposal, right? Exactly, and exactly. As you move forward, however, if you think about from a single projector having the ability to get thousands of square inches of image size and creating a fluid experience for people to utilize that canvas, uh, to move things around, we want to be sort of at the forefront of that. And I feel like projection is poised with laser projectors being smaller, lighter, brighter, uh, more cost effective over time. They're poised to basically activate any wall for that digital canvas. That is uh, exactly, that's exactly what I've been saying for years. Why not use the sidewalls uh, for accessory content? And sometimes that's a person. Whereas person's coming in, they're talking. Most time with the remote participants, you see them participating less. We gotta, we gotta change that. But, but use the sidewalls for those participants because although front row, I like what they did. I don't want to be the one at the front of the room. Everyone is staring at all the time. So I don't think that's the perfect solution. Just by putting those people at the bottom, if you're doing a face-to-face -face meeting, emulating a face-to-face -face meeting, great, that it works. But, you know, quite honestly, a lot of people on meetings are doing stuff like this. They're not engaged face to face all the time because they're doing multitasking, especially younger generation. So I would prefer my giant image to be on the side walls where all the major content focuses on the front. So when I speak, people can look and see me just like they were in the room and would. Right. And it's not like when I'm in a meeting with you, when we're sitting side by side, right, we're staring at each other. We're following the content in the meeting. So I, I do think this is a good first step. I don't think it's the ultimate solution. So therefore, I agree with you 100%. Look, cameras are cheap. A Brio is a couple of hundred dollars. And you can use that in a meeting application. And by the way, you can project on the entire wall and mount a Brio onto the wall for that matter. And yeah, you're going to be projecting on top of it. But eventually, people are going to not notice it, right? Eventually, you're going to look at the content around it and not the, not the, the Brio sitting there mounted to the wall, right? So you don't have to build a perfect application. You have to build a more collaborative, um, efficient application, which is why I think 
project on all the walls, right? I mean, you, you said it yourself. You have projectors that are four or five hundred dollars. You, I wouldn't use those as my primary room projector, but I would absolutely use those as my secondary room projectors. I think it's a beginning of something new. If you think of companies like Arth Media that use projection, also Epson projectors for creating a holographic uh, presence uh, for meetings. Where you, are, I was surprised when I went to that particular demo to to think that I'm making eye contact with a person who's calling from New York when I knew for a fact that I wasn't looking at them and they were probably looking uh, at something else. But you know, between um, sort of AI, um, spatial audio, um, and um, you know, this plays a component of that meaning experience you're describing. Um, you know, but having a large canvas definitely helps to play with those uh, different elements. Imagine a day where you could hide the camera in a sort of a strategic placement and mask the location of the camera so that uh, when you are looking at the screen or your content, it's like making an eye contact. Today, there are two different physical things that are happening in the meeting room. Um, and, I, and I have to believe that companies like Microsoft, Zoom, um, WebEx, they are, they have a vision for the future. Um, and, and things are gonna move along that line. And like I said, on our end, we are doing a lot of experimentation and incubation projects to sort of help envision that future of that digital canvas in the future meeting rooms. Yeah, and, and you mentioned one technology that's on the verge of being introduced into our industry, which you can, you can actually um, experience it yourself if you just go out and buy a pair of uh, AirPods from Apple. The new AirPods Pros have spatial audio, which basically means if somebody over here is talking, the audio comes from over here, which we can't do yet in meeting room uh, technology because the platforms don't support it, but they're about to. Um, and so now you've got video everywhere and you have audio uh, solving, uh, not just differentiating between someone ruffling papers or typing on a keyboard and voices, but also doing spatial audio. We're, we're really moving into a realm of, um, of building meeting spaces out of any space, not just rooms themselves. And projection is the best way to do that. Because by the way, when you're not using it, you turn it off. And therefore the and room, the wall is, 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 you get it back, right? You're not, you're not projecting on it all the time. In fact, that even counts for glass. I mean, you can literally project on glass now. Um, and with, I can, things, with things like Raycon Signal, for example, yes, Perry, yeah. you know, you can walk into a room that looks like a regular room and you can have a physical meeting or you can walk into a room and all of a sudden your wall becomes a, a place to present um, content and, and go over material together. And I think this is what really excites me about the power of projection and where we're heading. Um, you know, it's like I said, uh, uh, it's kind of a renaissance for us from across experiential and things that are happening with the Van Gogh's and Monet's experiences of the world. And what's happening in meeting room spaces, which we are going to demonstrate at 21.9 at Infocom, so people can see the difference between. It would be like if you have five people crammed in a small mini, like my Honda Fit, or have a luxury car where now people are just basically breathing and the content and all those elements are, are in play. It's a completely different virtual meeting experience. Yeah, and, and I, I definitely agree with you. I mean, I could talk about this all day. I can't wait to see how you display this in your booth. I definitely think projection as a lead here um, and from a cost per square inch, uh, it, it can't be beat. Um, the, the really the only competitor you have is LED in this and LED is still many years away from being affordable for applications that are ad hoc like this. And by the way, you lose your wall. So um, although I'm a big fan of LED as well, just because of the colorimetry and the depth and things, I really see the projection is the way to go right now with this. Um, but look, Remy, I appreciate you talking to me about this and uh, Thanks, I appreciate, you know, your, your, uh, the reality of the situation is um, that we are in a, a crossroads for a bigger opportunity to serve our clients in a different way rather than just putting in hardware. And I think we have to really think about the workflow that they're going through and, and sort of the pain points that they're seeing in this remote collaboration thing is a big pain point. And, and by the way, by the way, if you have a room that has a whiteboard already in it, you can mask out the whiteboard and you can put a camera on that whiteboard, you know, a little Hudley canvas. You can put that on the whiteboard and all of a sudden that becomes part of the content as well. And you're not projecting on it. So you don't have this weird reflection for those people in the room. You can literally mask that out with the projector too. So there's a lot of things you can do there 
um, that uh, I, I think a lot of people aren't thinking about. Um, so thanks for coming on and joining. If you want to connect with Remy, just click on the link below so that you get to her LinkedIn profile. Of course, you can, uh, you know where Epson is, Epson.com. You'll see them at Infocom. And Remy, I think we should continue this discussion as Microsoft starts shipping Front Row and as, as other platforms like Zoom and others start adapting uh, to wider aspect ratios. Looking forward to seeing you and um, everyone basically physically at Infocom. Epson will be there. Our booth number is N2331. Um, and thanks again, Gary, for your time today. Yeah, thank you, everyone. And uh, again, it's been a special edition of my Ransom Raves video cast uh, with Remy Del Mar. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you all at Infocom. Thank you. Rave Radio with Ray